Okay, today we're starting my new project, which is going to be Shepherd's Pie. I've been putting this off for quite a while because I was trying to figure, been trying to figure out how I wanted to package this because everybody knows I like to package things that I can throw together and just add hot water. And I was trying to figure out how to do that with Shepherd's Pie being layered with mashed potatoes on the top. So, I'm doing a compromise on this one. We're going to do it kind of like I did my lasagna. And, uh, in a, an emergency situation, I can always rehydrate the, the meat mixture sauce, the bottom layer, in hot water and rehydrate the mashed potatoes separately and then just eat it that way. But I'm going to also make it to where I can pop it in the oven and get the, the mashed potatoes nice and browned on the top. So, first thing I need to do is uh, wash and peel about three pounds of potatoes. So, I'm going to get busy on that and I'll see you once they are all diced up and par uh, boiled to where I can stick a fork in them. Okay, so I ended up... Uh cooking up four pounds of potatoes. I drain that. Now let's give them a little mash. And I'm going to put, we'll start off with a cup of milk in that. To that, I'm going to add a cup of sour cream. Add a dash of salt in there. Add some black pepper. Let's have a little taste test. Mm, that tastes pretty good. So that's the way we're going to go. Okay, so I'm going to make three shepherd's pies for freeze drying. So I want three trays. So I'm going to use these half trays. And a half tray should hold for a medium freeze dryer, 1.25 pounds. So that's what we're going to put in each one. There you have it. I'll do two more trays like that, and next time you see this, it'll be coming out of the freeze dryer. I'll see you then. Taters are in the uh, freezer. That's actually the next day, so I know my taters are already frozen solid. So let's get to making the mix. So what I have here is three pounds of 90 percent lean ground beef that we need to get all browned up uh, without further ado let's get moving let's put it on here start so we'll get this browned up towards the end i'm going to put in one chopped large onion and cook that with the last part while the meat finishes cooking off. So we'll see you then. Okay, we got those cooked to, uh, onions kind of cooked to translucent. I drained the fat off of that. So now we're ready to get going. I'm going to add one cup of corn. Fr these are frozen corn. Actually, all my vegetables are frozen. Two cups of peas and carrots frozen. Two tablespoons of rosemary and two tablespoons of thyme. Four tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Alright. Now I got two cups of beef broth. 
and four tablespoons of tomato puree. And I'm using my favorite new brand that I found a long while back, Muir Glen Organic. Worth the extra. Okay, let's get this heating up again. Okay. That's starting to simmer, so I'm going to go ahead and put my two teaspoons of minced garlic in. Okay, that's starting to bubble, so we're going to keep an eye on this. We're going to let most of that bubble away. So I'll give that a, about 10 minutes, and uh, I'll get back to you. Okay, that's reduced down a little bit, so we will we'll turn that off, and we'll start dish, dishing it up. Alright, so I'll get those in the freezer, get them frozen solid, and they'll be going in the freeze dryer. I'll see you when it all comes out. Okay, there we have it. My shepherd's pie. Does that look good? Two trays of that. This is the leftover tomato paste from the recipe. And then three trays of mashed potatoes, which we're going to be using to top our shepherd's pie with. So let me get this all packaged up. First thing I want to do is get rid of that tomato paste. Now, what I think I'll do is put these potatoes Ziploc bag. Well, we don't want to leave the, <laughs> the liner in there. We don't really need that package, that do we? I'm just gonna powderize that. Now I'm going to zip it shut while I'm packaging. So when we do the final packaging, we're not going to zip that shut. So I need three of those. So the reason I packaged those first is because those potato flakes were going to want to absorb any moisture in the air real quick. So I wanted to isolate those really quick from moisture. Then we can get to packaging this. So what I thought I'd do is weigh this up, all of it. And since we're wanting to make three, I can just take that weight and divide it by three. Does it make sense? Five hundred and forty two grams. That's a hundred and eighty grams, hundred and eighty and a half. This don't do halves, so hundred and eighty grams 
per pouch. So we are going to package it right in the tin here. See where that? Now I'm going to unzip this, open the bag, I'm going to take these mashed potatoes and lay them in top like that. I can't remember the size of these pans, but they are in my, I've got them listed in my Amazon store. I bought them off of Amazon with the lids. So, if you're interested in doing it this way, we could do it this way. Now, I'm going to go ahead let's see. I think I'll just put the O2 absorber out here. It, it won't matter. Because these aren't airtight. on. Like that. I got this textured uh, stuff. It's similar to Food Saver, but it's Sure Pack, I think, off of uh, Amazon. I bought this on Amazon, I'm pretty sure. And uh, so what we're going to do, and I've already made a bag out of that by, by sealing one end. We're going to slide one of these in each bag. made those big enough. Let's see if I can get a vacuum on that. Might not be big enough. Might have to make some more. Longer. Get our O2 absorbers. These are 300 cc, and that's a lot of stuff in there. I'm asking it to take a lot of oxygen out, so I'm going to put two of those in each one. 200, two 300 cc. got those sealed up in there, vacuum sealed. Now I'm going to use the Mylar, which is a textured Mylar. 
again this is in my Amazon store it's textured to where your vacuum sealer will, it'll work on your vacuum sealer it's not as I think it's like a four or five mil which is why I double pack this with the clear and that because I don't want no hole to poke in this and ruin my food so I figured with a double we're, we're good to go so we'll slide those in there and all I did was make a pouch for those they come in a you can buy a single roll or uh, two rolls or a pack of three rolls and it's actually cheaper to buy a pack of three rolls Okay, so I got those in there. We'll get these vacuum sealed and then we'll do a taste test. There you have it. Those are ready to go into storage. And I'll leave one out to uh, reconstitute and do a taste test. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, it's dinner time. So I know I'm wasting a bag here, but I really like to show my viewers what it's like. So six months down the road, you can think like, got home from work, you really fancy some shepherd's pie, but you don't want to go through all the hassle of cooking it. You can make one of these up really quick. Open that up. Shepherd's pie. And our potatoes. Let's get some hot water. Now I could have got all scientific about this and weighed that before I freeze dried it and then weighed it after I freeze dried it and then worked out exactly the difference in weight and then put that much wa weight and water to it that's not how I roll though <laughs> I like to eyeball things and sometimes I get it right sometimes I get it wrong so I'm just going to add water to this until everything is covered so far we've added two cups of water and that looks about right everything's just starting to float now, in an emergency situation where we didn't have an oven or anything, we could eat this just like that, let that sit and reconstitute. But, since we are just think, having dinner after work, we can pop this in the oven. Can you just smell that aroma? Oh my gosh, you can smell that rosemary and thyme. So we put two cups of water in there. I'm going to start out with half a cup in my taters and see get to kind of try and get the right consistency there's a lot of potatoes in here okay that was a half a cup that's nowhere near enough that's three quarters of a cup we're getting close very close I'm doing is kind of kneading the bag and that's hot water from the attack it's not boiling water just a little bit dry What do you think? Should I try and pipe that on there or just spread it out? My piping skills 
are non-existent, I think I'll just spread it out. You could cut a little tip on there and pipe it on there and make make a nice pattern. But I don't think I'll do that. Alright, let's see if we can spread that. It's actually a little bit dry still. But we'll make it work. Okay. So my oven is preheated to 300, uh, 450 degrees. I'm going to pop that in the oven. Actually, I want to sprinkle some Parmesan cheese over the top of that. And then we're going to stick this in the oven until that turns golden brown. So I'll see you when it comes out. Okay, check that out. Does that look nice or what? So I cooked that in the oven at 450 degrees for uh, 20 minutes. Just until it got a little bit brown on the top. So let's dig in and see what it looks like. See what it came out like. If I can get this out, the first piece is always a little bit harder. Oh yeah, check that out. Does that look good or what? But they always say the proof is in the pudding. So let's see what it tastes like. Mm. That is really good. Let's see if I can cut that for you. Everything reconstituted perfectly on that. The carrots even got a little bit of a crisp to them as well. Not a freeze-dried crisp, but a you know a crunch like carrots. Mmm. Mmm. -mm. That's really good. Trying to think what I would do differently on that. I used two full trays of the meat mixture and one and a half trays of the uh, mashed potatoes. I only got four trays. Because I'd almost be tempted to say it'd be nice to, nice to have more of the meat to it. But to do that, I'd have to cut back on the potatoes, and I think I got right about the right amount of tomato, potato for the topping. to do it all in one loaf. I think you're going to like this. I didn't put a lot of seasoning in this. You could probably use a little bit of uh, salt and pepper on there. But I am very, very pleased with the way that came out. 
and I think you will be too. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all my viewers that support me by visiting my Amazon store. You wouldn't believe how much of a difference that makes in my budget to try and uh, buy new products to freeze dry. I'm on a very limited budget. I work construction and construction work comes and goes and we get slow po points and fast points, busy points. Right now we're in a slow point. So I really appreciate you guys supporting me on that. And if anybody's viewing this and uh, is interested in buying a Harvest Right freeze dryer, I, I would ask you to consider using my affiliate link, which is in the description box below. I've had a few, couple of people do that, uh, three people, and you'd be surprised again just how much of a difference that makes for me. It really helps a lot. So I thank you all for watching. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you next time. Bon appetit.